Well, a good day and a warm welcome to SABC News viewers. We are coming to you live from Port St. John's where the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries is conducting an imbizo to try and consult with the local people and local uh, small scale farmers um, to, 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 to kind of ascertain what are kind of uh, sort of their problems that they are faced with in their sector. Um, the Minister, Mr. Senzeni Zogwana, has also um, addressed um, the, the, the gathering here inside today and said that over 5,000 small scale fish f uh, farmers will receive a uh, right to fish uh, around Port St. John's. With me, I do have one of the local small scale fish farmers, uh, Mr. Randall Samvumvu Bentley, who is here, who is one of uh, people who might uh, benefit uh, from this um, initiative by the minister. Um, Mr. 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 Bentley, good day and welcome to SABC News. Good day, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Please tell us how are you feeling about today's um, consultation in Bizo and uh, what are some of your, your problems and some of the challenges that are still faced by uh, small-scale uh, fish farmers? Um, my thoughts of today is honestly, very honestly, um, it's a political game because um, now in this meeting there are questions being asked directly and the questions are not being directly answered. It's a dance around and and then um, what we call in Afrikaans jackals preisa eyester is when um, you just keep on promoting the work that you've done in the past instead of dealing with what you can't do or not doing now. So that is a big problem and I think one of the biggest challenges is that um, we cannot distribute um, the information down to the people at the local level and also that when we have um, consultation um, programs or consultation meetings with the minister and with the different delegates of the department, um, we speak and speak and never actually get heard. So I would say that is a huge problem. But what, what would you like to see happen from here? I would actually like to see them implement co-management where they will sit down and gain knowledge from the cultural people, the people that are practicing this every single day instead of just making their rules and regulations, not being fishermen, for us fishermen. And uh, about uh, over 5,000 small-scale fish farmers will receive um, rights to, to conduct their businesses, how does that make you feel? Um, I've got mixed feelings about that because it states 5,335 fishes but we know for a fact that there are many, many, many of those 5,000 that are actually not fishermen at all. They don't know the first thing about fishing. They are either people that have political sway or friends, family, um, that have those allocations or that have those rights where there are thousands and thousands of fishermen that are left out that do not have rights but they are genuine, genuine fishermen. So I'm mixed and muddled about that. Um, I would like to see the, um, the whole process reviewed. That would be the best thing but um, the problem is that in today's day, the Eastern Cape and the KZN have been marginalized for so many decades that even though the government is putting crumbs on our table, everybody is grappling for it because they have been waiting for so long. They are very, very poor. So the little crumbs, they'll grab at it. Mr. Randall, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Well, there was Mr. Randall, who is a small-scale fish farmer around here at Port St. John's, saying, of course, uh, some of the co-ops regulations must be reviewed because some of the people who are involved in those co-ops are not necessarily uh, business people, are not necessarily small-scale fish farmers, but are people who have proximity to uh, political leaders. Uh, from myself, Atule Joga in Port St. John's, it is back to you in studio.